This next performer performs all over from San Francisco to LA, and you've recently seen her in the film Thugs the Musical. Please put your hands together for Miss Clee Wiggins! <laughs> is for those who don't know a fupa is an acronym for a fat upper pussy area i have decided if you have a fupa and a muffin top that is called a pot pie i want you to put that in the lexicon put it give it to the people all i want i don't want any credit all I want is I want to see it one day on like Urban Dictionary. <laughs> and I'll just smile knowingly to myself. And say, that was me. I did that. <laughs> pot pie. That's how pot pies are made. It's a crusty pastry top with a meaty filling. <laughs> it's a culinary fact, people. I watch the Food Network. I watch the Cooking Channel. Watch all that shit. <laughs> oh yeah, whatever. Shut up, Jake. Ah, uh, so here's another thing. Sometimes uh, when I get out of a really steamy shower, I like to pretend that I'm in the movie Demolition Man, and I'll just look at the mirror and I'll go, Spartan? John Spartan? Is that you? Damn, there wasn't anybody in this century. And I laugh, laugh to myself. One time my boyfriend caught me doing that, and he's like, what the fuck are you doing? I go, you just can find one credit under the rebel morality statue. <laughs> you take these three seashells and you think about what you just did. <laughs> I'm silly. I like to be silly in my free time. Um, I'm also a nerd. This t-shirt is not an accident. This is not an instant. I bought this online like a nerd. Ought to. I love Star Wars. I love it. I love it a lot. He's, yeah. Quit co-signing, Jake. I swear to God. <laughs> I know this jackass right here. Like you couldn't tell. <laughs> um, I've also been taping my sets a lot lately, like audio taping them, and I've noticed that my voice doesn't sound like what you would think a typical black girl's voice sounds like. I mean, I guess in San Francisco is fine, but around the country and the world, it sounds more like a white girl who fucks a lot of black girls. <laughs> what it sounds like, <laughs> like a white girl who reads, but who likes big black dick in her. <laughs> that's kind of what I've decided. That's the, that's the description I've decided to go for <laughs> for my voiceover work. <laughs> Tell the, tell the casting agents, it says on the bio, she sounds like a white girl, fucks a lot of big girls. It really helps sell these Subarus. <laughs> um, but I like to keep it real. I like to still keep my blackness going. And here's how I do it, it's at the club, when I go to a nightclub, especially if I'm at a black club. I never give out my real name or my real phone number. It's always a fake one, all girls do it. Guys, just know this. It's, her name's not Tashina. <laughs> her phone number is an 8675309. She is lying to you. My fake uh, club name is Kashik, with two I's and a K. <laughs> this perfect brother, do it. Um, I've never gotten busted on that name, not once. It's, most black guys are like, oh, is that, is that Nigerian? Yeah, okay, if you say so, Dante. <laughs> <laughs> it's Nigerian. You know what that is? It's Chewbacca's home planet. <laughs> Not once have I got called out on that shit. My fake phone number, 3263827. Right? That is the number of the trash compactor on the Death Star when they go to rescue Princess Leia in episode four of New Hope. Alright? I got busted on that one one time at a club in Atlanta. And the guy's response, he pulled out his phone, called the number, found out it was fake. His response was to pull a gun on me. Now, <laughs> this is a totally true story. Now, I 
should have been scared, but I was in a club full of people, so I was just like, oh, well, let me give you my real phone number because I've always wanted a guy who might choke me in my sleep, and I think I have found the one. <laughs> That's what I've always wanted. And, oh, Angel, thank you for coming my way. I mean, boys are dumb is my point on that, on that little punchline. Boys are dumb. They're so dumb. Like, I read another story about a guy who tried to buy a drink for a lady at a bowling alley, and she turned it down, and his response was to throw a bowling ball at her head so hard that it exposed her skull uh, to the white meat, as Bernie Mac would have said, rest in peace, right? And I'm just like, what did he think she was gonna do? She's like, oh, now that I'm retarded, I think that you and I could become something. Like, nah, jackass. You just took all of my knowing away, jerk. And, like, it's almost enough to make me be a lesbian. But I'm so close. I kind of look like one already. So close. But here's two things, here's, there's two reasons why I can't be a lesbian. There's two things women have I do not like. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, whatever, fupas. That's, that's your choice. That's, look, that's, look, those are your food choices, not my food choices. But they have emotions in abundance and in no particular order. <laughs> I don't like, that's why I like sci-fi. Robots don't have emotions, right? And they have vaginas. And I am so sorry, vaginas frighten me. I pay enough attention to my own vagina to keep dicks in it on a regular basis. That is about it. Like, you ever see that movie, The Descent? It's just six bitches go in a cave and nothing but blood and unhappiness comes out. <laughs> that is a metaphor for lesbianism, in my opinion. I mean, go down there and go spelunking if you want to, bitch. I, see, I actually don't really buy too many things on the internet because I don't like to buy shit sight unseen. And with vagina, you don't know what you're getting until you get all up in it. You have to get all up in it to get all up in it, if you know what I'm saying. The big, you just lift the balls, take a sniff, and you're like, all right, it looks acceptable. And you put it in your mouth or whatever. <laughs> That's all. Um, I do, uh, yeah. Oh, I love the dick. Oh, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, do, I like Star Trek as well. I'm a, huge, yeah. I'm a huge Star Trek fan. I go both ways in that way. Well, that's, where, that's where my lesbianism went. I couldn't go to the actual vaginas, but I'm a Star Trek and Star Wars fan about equally. Um, I almost wore a board t-shirt tonight. You know, you know, I had to make my fashion choices, but I wanted to wear my new green eyeshadow. So, green Empire Trek t-shirt. Um, but here's the thing uh, about Star Trek is I'm a TNG Star Trek fan. Uh, <laughs> um, and I'm also uh, a lazy masturbator. Um, I don't like to masturbate. I got carpal tunnel, I've waited tables for a long time. I got carpal tunnel in this hand, so like, don't, plus I'm, I mean, I'm a shiftless lazy Negro, let's be honest. You know, and this job, it's 15 minutes of work and 27 hours of drinking. 27 hours, that's right. You start <laughs> But I have found that I can combine my other, those two loves as well in the same way that I've combined Star Wars with other things. And that I decided, since Star Trek ever comes to fruition, I want Data to be my dildo. Uh, <laughs> I, just, I just want Jordy to reprogram him so that when I get off of my shift in the astrometrics lab or whatever, <laughs> I mean, he's fully functional and programmed in multiple techniques. I think Data is probably an amazing way. And you can just, Get out of here, Data. I'm done with you. Leave, nigga. I don't want to come in and got a bunch of candles and shit lit. What the fuck are you doing? It's three in the morning. What else are we gonna do? I don't need atmosphere and ambiance for this bullshit. Let's put that fucking uh, dick in me and just get this party started. <laughs> All right. In closing. Um, <laughs> in closing, what I was gonna say. Um, actually. Uh, I'll reveal a little secret to the audience here. Uh, Ed, Greer, Ed Greer is my boyfriend. That's uh, who caught me doing Demolition Man in the fucking shower and shit. Here's the thing, when we first started dating, we used to have these crazy arguments. Like, and so we still argue like a real black couple, like we call each other all kind of motherfuckers and niggas and stuff, but what we argue about tends to be super nerdy. Our first huge, like, door slamming argument was how to best reboot Buck Rogers. Right? <laughs> Like 
literally like cops called to the residence, neighbors knocking on the window. The fuck is going on? I was talking to the cops like, you know what this motherfucker had the nerve to tell me? He told me that if you ever reboot Buck Rogers, that Twinkie would be an unnecessary, superfluous character. You know what the fuck? That's why I stabbed that nigga with my Klingon backlash sword because he doesn't know what the fuck he was talking about. All right, I'm gonna get out of here. Thanks, you guys. Bye.